Well, the next tune we're going to do is uh, The Maiden's Prayer, which is a song that's, oh, gosh, been around an awful long time, hasn't it, Josh? Yes, it was written by Bob Wills, Bob, back in, in the 40s. Yeah. The, um, have you always played, always had a resophonic guitar to play, Josh, or did you start off with some other instrument? Or? No, I had a, a little Stella guitar, you know, it didn't have the resonator or whatever to it. Right. Uh, this little thing that I'm going to do is, is kind of comical to probably you or me now, but right. I enrolled, they enrolled me in a, in a conservatory of music my father did, and, and you could take uh, 60 lessons at a dollar a lesson, and you got your guitar after you completed the course. And I took two lessons and, and went home. <laughs> and three months later, I went back, and they'd done closed up their shop and gone, so I kept the guitar. I didn't know where to send it back to, you know. <laughs> but it was a little stellar guitar. Just to, Back in those days, they, uh, they called it Hawaiian, mm -hmm. and there was no resonator or whatever. On well, it. Stellas are kind of hard to find these days, but I guess there are a few of them around. I wish I'd have kept mine. Somewhere, but... Uh, the point is that you could take a regular guitar and tune it up in G tuning if you had some kind of a way to raise the nut there to, to uh, pick it up off the press. You don't necessarily have to have a, a dobro or a, or a resophonic guitar to, to practice some of these tunes. However, it's true. In time, you'll you'll need one as you continue this course. Uh, let's go ahead and do this maiden's prayer, Josh. Play that for All us. All right. Sometime. I think you play that just about everywhere you go, don't you? People like to hear that. Yes, one. I do. I try to include that everywhere I go in every show. I love that one. You suppose uh, did Cliff Carlisle, you mentioned him earlier, did he play uh, resophonic guitar? Did he? It seems to me like he occasionally played just a regular old uh, guitar rigged up in Hawaii for Hawaiian picking, didn't he? I think he did, Bob, uh, when he first started with it. But uh, then he picked up the old wood guitar, you know, with the resonator and... Uh, and he worked on uh, some of Jimmy Rogers' records. That's where I first heard him. Right, right. And I loved his work so much. I yeah, hold him got, up pretty high. Got... Cliff passed away and uh, left a lot of memories. Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully you've now worked your way through the uh, first tape and are familiarizing yourself with how we use our tablature and relating it to our instrument. In other words, we look at the tablature. It shows us what notes to play and with which finger. And we memorize that, and uh, we try to get away from our tablature then and, and just concentrate on our instrument. Uh, we're gonna, from this point on, I'm going to be explaining less and less which note picks which string and where it's fretted. That's all marked in the tablature. We're going to start concentrating on trying to get as much material in as we can, and also working on our tone control and techniques. Uh, the first thing you'll look at on Maiden's Prayer, you'll see that we have some what we call optional notes in there. There are notes that I have included that Josh played, but were there a backup instrument behind Josh, you would have never heard those notes. They're just simply Josh's way of keeping his time, and you may want to develop that technique. Uh, they're the notes that are uh, they're not filled in. They're just uh, little circles down there, and they're not blackened like the black notes indicate the main main text of the melody. Uh, 
you'll see down there that I've, I've marked them. If played, played very lightly. And uh, that's what we mean by that. The <clears throat> maiden's prayer starts off uh, the first line. There's nothing there that we haven't done before. There's a, a grace note. There's some slides. And uh, most of it's single note stuff. Starts off played. Uh, most of it starts off with the thumb. And we have some double notes where the uh, first string is left open. The first line sounds like... Now those are those two optional notes down there I was talking about. I played them a little louder than uh, Josh played them and uh, you would want to also. I just wanted to give you an idea of where they came in. But right after those two optional notes, it's followed with a little grace note and a slide. Open. There's that optional note. Once again, the first line. The second line is a series, for the most part, of uh, two string notes. The uh, first string is played open near the, nearly the entire song. Down toward the end of this uh, first, second line, you'll see a note marked 0H2. What I'm trying to say there is that's an open note with a hammer on it, too. By hammer on, we mean to place the bar at the second fret, allowing the string to continue to ring. That one note would sound like So we pick the string open, that is the first string, and then we lay our bar down at the second fret. And I'll show you how that works out in the tune. But the second line sounds like... Now the third line starts off with a typical Josh lick. And it's a first string picked open, third string slid from two to three to two, and then played open, followed by an open hammer two on the fourth string, and then uh, the third string picked open, and the sixth string picked open. And that lick sounds like... And that leads us right into the rest of that line, which is just almost exactly like the first line. So I'll play that lick one time, and I'll play the rest of the um, third line. Now the fourth line starts out, and it's mostly played on the first string with just occasionally going to the second string with our thumb. Starts out at the fifth fret and goes Five, four, two, zero. A slide from two to five, and then that same thing again. Then the same thing again. So that the entire fourth line sounds like. ending, or the first ending, would goes up to the 12th fret. We're now looking at line 5. 12th fret, first string, hit, played at 12, then at 7, slid to 9, little, little optional note, then played first string again, played open, and then played at the 5th fret, and then there's a little fill there. But up to the fill, it would sound like... And then the fill is all played, that's all open strings, and it's just a little brush that catches the third and fourth string, or the fourth and third string. Then the index finger catches the second string, thumb catching the fifth string, and then followed immediately by the third string. So that that sounds kind of like...
which leads us right back into the first line. So let me show you how that sounds. And then we play the entire first, second, third, and fourth lines until we get down to the fifth line. And we play the part that we have marked ending, which is the second half of the fifth line. And it starts out at 12. And when we get to that, after we slid from seven to nine, then we just slowly slide down to open. And that would sound like. Play it once, open. And we're slowing down all the time as we do this. And then we just strum all six strings. So that the ending sounds like. Up to this point, Josh, uh, all the songs we've done have been in G. We're going to change that around a little bit now. We're going to take a look at one that's in the C chord. Uh, and you go out to a lot of bluegrass festivals, you're going to see a lot of a lot of dobro pickers sitting around. Uh, might even see me using a capo. Now I've never seen Josh use a capo. Do you have a capo, Josh? No, I. Uh, you know, with Flat and Scruggs, I always said. Uh, Flat would kill me if I ever used capo. <laughs> but he believed in the, the old straight stuff, and I guess I just kind of followed that along yeah. all that time. I don't have anything against the capo, but uh, I know a lot of times it's uh, like fast stuff that you might do, like an A or mm -hmm. B flat or something like that, and we get you open roll, which I'd like to have a lot of times, but, yeah. which I don't have. But <laughs> I had to learn to, to do it the other way, so I just stuck with that. Yeah. Well, this song is uh, is called Home Sweet Home. It's a real popular song with the banjo players. Uh, isn't that right, Josh? Oh, it is. Uh, I recorded it with Earl Scruggs. Of course, he had the tuners on his banjo, and, and I thought he'd done a mighty fine job on it, and we recorded it, and uh, I just got what was left on it, but I really love to play it. <laughs> play that one for us slow and then we'll get into the tablature. Okay, taking a, uh, a look at our tablature for Home Sweet Home, you'll be, be receiving in your package um, two sets of tablature for Home Sweet Home. The one-page version is the um, very slow version that uh, Josh played, 
And what we'll be teaching here, your tablature, the two-page tablature is a composite of the way Josh played it on the fast version and the way he played it on the slow version. And uh, the reason I did that was because there were so many interesting little fills and, and optional notes that Josh put in on the fast version that I thought it might be beneficial to uh, take a look at some of those. So if you'll get the two-page Home Sweet Home tablature out, we'll be studying from from that piece of tablature. The uh, first line, as we said before, this tune is in C, so we're going to be working basically from the fifth fret. And the tune starts off with a, a grace note there on the fifth fret, the uh, fifth and third strings, and moves up to the second and fourth strings. And it's the first part of it sounds like... Up to the tenth fret, eighth and slide to ten, and then back down to the first and third strings on five, and then that little fill sounds like so. The entire first line sounds like. Second line, once again starting at, at the fifth fret, sounds like. Now, here we're going to the uh, bar lifted position where we're only fretting the first string and leaving the uh, third string open. Uh, the first two notes are just the bar is covering the fifth fret, and then that next note where it's showing three and zero, the third string third fret on the first string and the uh, third string open, we'll have the bar lifted position and then catch those two little optional notes, then slide the bar down to two, and then we're going to do a picking, the, now we're going to move, our thumb is going to move down to the fourth string and pick it, and the uh, first string is going to be slid from two to three and back to two, and it sounds like... And then we pick the first string open and the fifth string open. And then we play the second and fourth string at the fifth fret. With the little fill, it sounds like. So that the second line sounds like. third line sounds very much like the first line, except that the fill is just a little bit different. Starts off once again with that grace note. Then the fourth line <clears throat> is very much like the second line, except without the same fill. The uh, fifth line now, is we're going into the second part of the song, or the B part. It starts off on the fifth fret, and it sounds like... Then the last line of the first page, or the sixth line, is just exactly the same as the fourth line of that page so we'll we'll just uh, run through that quickly and uh, it sounds like then we go to page two and the first line on page two is uh, again very similar to the fifth line on page one so we'll run through it it goes then the last line of the page is uh, very similar to what we've played before. It sounds like... Uh, 
uh, the next tune we're going to do is uh, it's just a little short segment of a tune. It's the break Josh took on the uh, Salty Dog Blues when he played Carnegie Hall. He really knocked them out with that one, Josh. Oh, that must have been quite a thrill for y'all playing in Carnegie Hall, huh? Yes, it, it was an honor to, to work Carnegie Hall, where all the greats that, that worked, Toscanini and everybody like that, and you just, it was unheard of for a bluegrass group to go to Carnegie Hall. <laughs> well, you sure knocked them out with this one. When, when Josh cut down on the dobro on this particular break, it just, the place went wild. But this is the uh, Salty Dog Blues, just, just a little short break that Josh took on that one. Can you slow it down now one time, Josh? You may not be able to get the resonance out of it, but... Yeah. If you have your tab tablature out now for the Salty Dog Blues, you'll notice the um, first line and the first note is sort of a... Uh, uh, vamp motion. We, it's actually we strum all the strings at the ninth fret, sliding to the twelfth fret, and when we get to the twelfth fret, we mute. That is to say, we just more or less roll our bar off of the strings in a counterclockwise motion, and it gives us a sound. I'll try to do it very slowly, which is very difficult. But actually, he does it much faster, and it's sort of a shocking sort of a sound that really gets your attention it goes so after we've done that then it's sort of a backward roll on the uh, 12 at the 12th fret the middle finger catching the uh, first and second strings then the index finger catching the third string and the thumb catching the fourth string so that that particular that first part of that tab sounds like Then we go down to the ninth fret and we catch the first string with our middle finger and slide it down to seven. Then we catch the second string with our index finger at the seventh fret and slide it up to nine. Then we catch the third string at the ninth fret. So that that little lick sounds like So up to that point, we have. Then we catch the first string with our middle finger at the ninth fret and slide it to the 14th fret. Then we play the 14th, the first string at the 14th fret one more time. Then we catch it again with our middle finger and slide it from 14 to 12. Then our index finger catches the second uh, string at the 12th fret and slides it up to 14. Then our thumb catches the third string at the 14th fret. So that the first line sounds like Then the second line we start out on the second string, our thumb playing the second string at the 5th fret and we slide it from five to seven. Then our middle finger catches the first string at the seventh fret. Our index finger now catches the second string at the seventh fret and slides it down to five. Thumb catching the third string at the fifth fret and sliding it up to seven. So that that little sound sounds like Then we catch the first string with our middle finger and slide it from 7 all the way up to 12. Then our middle finger catches the same string, the first string, at the 10th fret now and slides it up to 12 and back down to 10. Our index finger catches the second string at the 10th fret and slides it up to 12. Then our thumb catches the third string at the 12th fret. So that up to that point, that line sounds like... Then the um, last part is uh, sort of like a little afterthought. Uh, Josh catches the fifth string, or excuse me, the fourth string at the 10th fret with his thumb, 
and he slides it up to 12. Then he catches the uh, third string at the 12th fret with his index finger. Then he comes back and catches that fourth string again and slides it down to 12, or slides it from 12 down to 10. Then he catches the fifth string with his thumb, slides it from 10 to 12. Then he just catches the uh, third string with his middle finger at the 12th fret. So that that entire little section sounds like entire last line sounds like the entire break played very slowly sounds like Josh, one of the one of the songs that you wrote, uh, I've always really enjoyed it. It's a tune called Evelina, which you named after your wife. It's going to be a sort of an introduction here to harmonics or chimes, or the more simple version of them. And uh, to get those chimes, what Josh does is he lays his little finger, he gets the bar up off of the off of the strings, and he uses his little finger on the fifth fret the seventh fret and the twelfth fret. You just kind of lightly lay your your little finger across that uh, that fret and then you pick the strings normally. Uh, when did you write that song, Josh? I forget what year that was, Bob, but uh, uh, I suppose it's in the, about the middle 60s that I recorded with Flat and Scruggs and I did name it after my wife, Evelyn. And, and it's a always a request when you go around shows they want it. so, and it's, yeah. it's not that hard to play it sounds like it is but it's not that's right it's a, it's a beautiful song though and now we're going to hear Evelina <laughs> song. Now that's a technique. Those harmonics, you'll be using those in songs like uh, Foggy Mountain Chimes and, uh, well, the uh, steel guitar chimes or the dobro chimes, which is a song that uh, nearly every dobro player plays. Okay, Josh, now we're going to take a look at uh, Evelina played slowly one time, and then we'll uh, take a look at our tablature and uh, start working this song out. Looking at the tab tablature now for Evelina, 
you'll notice that uh, you'll see quite a few little C's up above each line. Uh, those C's indicate, as our introduction to the tab explains, is a simple harmonics, or simple chimes as we call them. Uh, that's also covered in the uh, left-hand technique portion of the uh, introduction to this course. Remember that uh, your harmonics, simple harmonics, can be obtained at the 12th fret, the 7th fret, and the 5th fret. We simply lay our little finger at the 12th fret lightly across the strings, right where the bar would normally be if we were playing the 12th fret, and we just pick the strings. We can also do that at the 7th fret. And in this tune, Evelina, we'll be covering a couple of more techniques that we haven't talked about, and we'll be an introduction to them as we go along. The first line of Evelina starts off with a simple walk-up on the first string played by the thumb, and it walks up from an open position to the first fret to the third fret. And that sounds like... Then we place our little finger across the twelfth fret, as we were talking about, as in the uh, simple uh, chime technique. And we play the notes as designated. So that that entire first part of that first line sounds like... Then we put our little finger at the seventh fret as we continue in that line and play those designated notes, which are... And then we play that ending portion, which is a first string played in the open position, then the second string played open with a hammer on at the first fret. Then we play the first string open once more. Then that next note there on the second line is one PO, or one pull off to an open position. And that would sound like we pick the string while we're fretted at the, pick the second string while we're fretted at the first fret. Then we pull the bar off toward us and slightly away. And that gives us a, we sort of pick it with the bar so that the open string rings after we, we remove the bar. Then we play the third string open. So that that whole little ending lick sounds like. Once again. So the entire first line sounds like. Now the second line is very similar uh, to the first line. Uh, the difference being on that at that first little walk up, we're just going to pick the second string open, then pick it at the first fret, then we pick the first string open which of course is the same note as if we had played the second string at the third fret, like we did on the first, first time around. At any rate, it sounds like... Now we place our finger once again at the twelfth fret and play those same notes once again, which go... Seventh fret. Then that same ending lick. On the third line, we place the bar at the fifth fret, and we play the first three strings, one, two, and three. And as we play them, we slide, or we slant, the forward slant position so that the fret, after we played it at five, we slant it so that the bar is now covering the first string at the seventh fret position, the second string at the sixth fret position, and still barring the third string at the fifth fret. Then we pick it at that position and slide or slant it back to the straight five fret position. 
So those first two notes would sound like. Then we move the bar up to the seventh fret, straight across, and do the same thing. This time, as we pick the strings, we slant so that the first string is now covered at the ninth fret, the second string at the eighth fret, and the third string still at the seventh fret. And that would sound like. Then we pick those three strings again at that slanted position. And as after, right after we pick them, we straighten the bar back out at seven. So up to that point, those first four notes in that line sound like. Then the next note is just straight at the fifth fret. And as we strike it, we slide the bar up to the seventh fret. Then down to the sixth fret and we pick it. The fifth fret, pick those first three strings. Then the next note is two, three, and four picked at the fifth fret. Then we pick it again at the fifth fret, sliding it to the seventh fret. So the entire third line sounds like. Then as the tab indicates, we go back and we play that same, uh, the second line, almost all the way through. We would play. And we'd go down to the seventh fret and play that portion of it. And right there, we would start at where it says ending and play the seventh fret in a uh, simple chime position, that is the, finger, the little finger covering the seventh fret, and play the third, second, and first strings. Then we'd go up and bar at the twelfth fret and play the third and fifth string twice. Now drop the bar down to the tenth fret and play the second and fourth strings. Moving the bar up to the eleventh, playing the same strings and then up to the 12th fret playing, once again, the second and fourth strings. So that that whole thing sounds like. And so the entire last line would sound like. Well, this next song we're going to do, Josh, is uh, Fireball Mail. You do that in G. Uh, I'd be kind of interested. That's a good old song. I sure like it, and it, uh, the audience really likes to hear you play that. I'd like to get a little background on that song from you. Well, the first time I ever heard this tune, uh, Roy Acuff did it, you know, back in the yeah. 40s, you know, him and Oswald, and uh, kind of fooled around with it, of course. He was big then, of course he's big now, That's but right. <laughs> still the old tunes will never die. And when I went with Flat and Scruggs, we was getting the instrumental album ready to do, and, and we did Fireball Mail. Let's hear Fireball Mail. <laughs>
let's let's slow that down and uh, we'll take a look at it slowly and then we'll get into our tablature <laughs> tablature for fireball mail. Uh, just briefly looking through the tablature, you'll see that uh, there really aren't any big surprises in this tune. Uh, they're all basically things that we've done before. You'll notice that quite a few little fill sections, and they are basically uh, some picking patterns that you'll find useful uh, with other tunes as you begin to work out tunes on your own. Uh, taking a look at the first line there and down toward the end of the line in the uh, last little fill section you will see one note that's on the uh, fourth string and it's marked zero H two P O. Well that's a open string with a hammer on it two and then a pull off. So what we mean by that is we hit the string open then we hammer on at the second fret followed immediately by a pull off and that would sound like you might practice that a couple of times before we go into the tune. Now the first line of Fireball Mail starts off with the first and four strings being picked by the middle and the thumb. And the first two notes are just those first and fourth strings open and we're going to simply leave the first string open as we pick those first four notes and we'll walk the bar up. The first two notes are just. Then we lay the bar at the second fret on the fourth string. Then we pick it again, this time sliding from two to five on the fourth string. So that first four notes sounds like. Then the little section marked fill would sound like. So that first half of that first line would sound like. Now here, that uh, notice the fourth string is, during the, the entire fill section, the fourth string is covered at the fifth fret by the bar. And what we do there, it's sort of the bar lifted position or the single note position. So that all the other strings are open except that fourth string at the fifth fret. And we just kind of have the bar, bar tilted up so only that one string is fretted. Moving on to the second part of that line, we'll go to the second string, or excuse me, the third string fretted at the second fret and pick the first and third strings sliding from two to four. Back down to the second fret on the third string. so that that last part sounds like. Now we have another little fill here with that hammer on and pull off, and the fill would sound like. So that the second half of the first line sounds like. And the entire first line sounds like. second line now <clears throat> we just have some single notes there to start off with 
on the fourth, fourth string open, place it the second fret, and then we play the third string open, and then we slide from two to five, and it goes like this. Then the fill would sound like All that is is picking the first string open, then doing a forward roll on three, two, and one, and then letting the thumb come down and catch the uh, fourth string fretted at the fifth fret, which is where it would be after we did that slide from two to five, so that the first half of the second line sounds like. second half of the line of the second line starts off with a bar at the fourth fret on the third string and it's just a walk up picking the first string at the same time uh, four four five seven seven and it sounds like after we've done that little walk up we move the bar into a position where all strings are covered at the seventh fret with the exception of the first string so that we can get that little fill there and all it is is just taking the thumb across the strings from four, three, two, and then picking the first string with the middle finger and uh, catching the uh, third string with the thumb so that it sounds like. So that the entire second line sounds like. third line we're going to walk from seven up to twelve on the third string once again leaving the first string open and picking two notes at a time and it sounds like then we have a little fill there once again that this this fill is going to require that all strings be covered with the exception of the first string at the twelfth fret so we leave that first string open and that little fill would sound like So that the entire uh, first half of the uh, third line would sound like. Then we take the bar to the tilted position or single note position on the third string at the twelfth fret and we pick that first string open, third string at the twelfth fret. Then we move the bar down to the ninth fret and as we pick it we slide it to the seventh fret. Then we pick those first and third strings open, and then we place the bar once again at the single note position on the fifth fret, third string, and slide it from five to seven as we after we pick it. Then we have a little fill there that requires a single note position at the uh, seventh fret on the third string, which is where we are. So that the last half of the um, third line sounds like and the entire third line would sound like and the last line of the first time through this song <coughs> line number four would go picking the fourth string open once, placing the bar at the second fret once, letting our thumb pick the third string open, and then picking the open, the first string open with our middle finger, coming back down and catching the fourth string at the second fret, letting our, little, our middle finger once again pick the first string open, and then allowing our thumb to pick the fourth string open, then we pick it at the second fret, the fourth string once again. Then we pick it open, lift the bar up and pick it open once and hammer on it too. Then let our thumb pick the third string open. So that that once, fourth line once again sounds like. fill it sounds like so that the entire fourth line sounds like now that 
that's the first time through the song. The uh, fifth line starts off with a little grace note there on the first and uh, fourth strings open. The next note is the fourth string fretted at the, uh, or barred at the second fret. Then we do a double note. The first string is picked open the, uh, with the middle finger and the uh, fourth string is picked with a thumb and slid from the two fret to the five fret. So that sounds very similar to the uh, first part of line one, just a little bit, little variation on it. And once again, that up to the fill there on the fifth line would sound like. Then the fill is exactly the same as it was at the first line. So the first half of the fifth line would sound like. Then as we continue on, the second half of the second line starts off at this, uh, on the third string, fretted at the second fret, or barred at the second fret, and slid to four while we pick the first string open. Then the next note, we, uh, it's the same position. We start off at two on the third string. Once again, the first string is open, and we slide from two to three to two. Then we pick the first and third strings open. Then we pick the first and fourth strings, the fourth string barred at the second fret, and then those two strings open. So that that second half of the uh, first line up, or up to, of the fifth line up to the uh, fill sounds like. And the fill, a little bit different this time, starts off the sixth string picked open, first string picked open, then a hammer on two, a hammer on at the second fret on the fourth string, third string picked open, then the sixth string picked open, first string picked open. And that would sound like so that the um, second half of the fifth line would sound like Entire fifth line would sound like then as is indicated uh, we would go back and we would play line two and line three which go sixth line which starts off on the fourth string open then fret it at the second fret and then we play the third string open then we our middle finger catches the first string then we come back down and catch the fourth string at the second fret then the middle finger catches the first string again open then we play the third string open then we do a pull off, that is the bar, the first string is fretted at the second fret and we pull off right after we pick it. Once again. Then we go down and we catch the third string at the second fret, sliding it from two to three to two. Then we play that third string open. Then we play the fourth string fretted, barred at the second fret. And then we go up and play the third string open. And that would sound like. And the fill at the end of that would sound like. So the entire sixth line would sound like. Seven, and it 
it's going to be, again, a variation on the first line and a variation on the fifth line, which is the first part of the song. We're playing through this song three times. Anyway, the seventh line starts off very much like the sixth line. The fourth string is picked open, barred at the second fret, then slid from the second fret to the fifth fret, and the fill is the same as we've been doing. Then we slide from two to four on the third string, and go back down and catch it at the, the third string at the second fret, sliding from two to three. Then we pick it open. Then we pick the fourth string at the second fret, at the second fret, yes. Then we pick it open. And that fill sounds like, the fill right after that sounds like. So we'll play the seventh line through now. Then we go back and play the second and third lines, which we've done before. They go... a simple uh, simple little one note passage and it goes starting out on the fourth string we pick it open bar it at two play the third string open and then we come back to the fourth string and slide it from three to two and then we play it open that's the first half of line eight and it would sound like then the second half of line eight starts out on the first string, fretted at the second fret. And then we play it open, come down and catch the third string sliding from two to three. Then we move the bar back down to the second fret on string three. And then we play it open. Then we play the fourth string barred at the second fret. Play it open. And then we play the sixth string open. So that the entire eighth line, once again, and the ending of the song would sound like. Uh -huh. 